Hey class, Mr. Hanji here. For today's lesson, we are going to be taking a look at section 3.1, which is going to deal with graphing relationships. Now, section 3.1 is the start of unit 2, and it is also the beginning of module 3. So throughout this unit and this module, we're going to be taking a look at understanding functions. So we're going to talk about what functions are, what they look like, and how we can go through and represent them. So section 3.1, we're specifically going to take a look at graphing relationships. So for today, we have one learning goal, which is going to state you will be able to describe a relationship given a graph or graph a relationship given a description. So you're either going to be given a situation and you're going to be asked to go through and draw a graph re representing that or you're going to be asked to go through and given a graph, give a description for it. So you're either going to be given a description, go through and draw a graph that represents that, or given a graph, give a description of what happened. Now, example one is going to ask us to go through and, using the graph in situation below, give a possible reason for each change in the graph. So if we take a look at example one, okay, example one, the situation is a, the distance a delivery van is from the warehouse varies throughout the day. The graph shows the distance from the warehouse for a day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So a few things, okay, as we move further to the right on the graph, that relates to how much time has occurred. So the further the way, the more time that has occurred. So right here, this would be zero. That means that's starting at zero hours, or based off this one, that would be eight o'clock. So this would be starting at eight or zero hour zero. And as time moves on, this would then end at 5 p.m. because that's when he gets back, or the delivery van, sorry, gets back to the warehouse. Now, distance in miles. Okay, again, the bottom would be zero miles away from the warehouse. So that means the van is at the warehouse. And the further up we go, or the higher the graph gets, is the further away we are from the warehouse. So as this rises up, that's as it gets further away from the warehouse. And then as we come back, the closer it gets to the warehouse. So that is what the graph is going to kind of tell you in the different changes. Now, what this problem would ask you to go through and do is describe a possible reason for each change. That means I have to provide a reason for parts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 in what's happening. Now, to save time and matter of me going through and writing a lot, okay, I'm going to provide that for us here for my completed notes. And what I'm going to do is talk about what each part means and why I said that for each part. So let's take this part by part. So for the first section of the graph, okay, I said that we're leaving the warehouse and just to kind of give us a difference, okay, because if you notice there's different slopes of the lines, because this one is just kind of moving at a steady pace, I kind of took it as we're leaving the warehouse and they're driving 55 miles per hour. So as we're driving away from the warehouse, we're driving at a steady rate of say 55. Now, if we look at two, we're still continuing away from the warehouse, but it's a little bit slower speed. So it may be that the delivery van kind of worked its way into town, which would be a slower speed. So I said that we're still driving away from the warehouse, but that it's moving about 35 miles per hour. So we're driving away, we're still driving away, but here we're moving faster than here. So I just did slower speeds. At three, okay, we have a straight line across. So time is happening, but distance is not increasing. So the way I took this is that the delivery van made a stop. So it has stopped. Time is continuing on, but it's not moving further or closer. So we've made a stop, which in my mind would be that we're making a delivery. 
And then I just kind of continue the same thing. Step four is driving further away. But it's a little bit faster, so I said 60 miles per hour. Five is another stop because we're not, time is going, but we're not moving further or closer. Six, we then all of a sudden change direction. So instead of going up, we're now going down. So that means we're moving closer to the warehouse. Now, this one seemed to match about close to what this one was, so I said about 55 miles per hour. Seven, made another stop, making another delivery. Eight, they're headed back towards the warehouse, and continuing back towards the warehouse. These are just different speeds, and at the end of step nine, the delivery van has made it back to the warehouse. So you can kind of reference this, but just know this indicates as we're moving away, and this indicates we're moving back. Steps three, five, and seven would indicate stops on the route. Um, it could also indicate the fact that maybe the delivery van stopped to get gas or something to eat, whatever it may be. Or it could be stuck at a railroad crossing. Who knows the endless possibilities. All right, so that is example one, where we just go through and give a situation for each one. Um, so we just looked at a graph, took a scenario, and then gave a description for each part of that graph. All right, next, example two is gonna have us go through and match each situation with one of the graphs below. So if we look at example 3a, or just example three altogether, Okay, example three states three hoses fill three different water barrels. So imagine three different water barrels set out in your driveway. You have three different hoses that are filling those different barrels, and they're filling them at different rates. So one's moving faster, one's moving slower, one's moving consistently. Now, the green hose fills a water barrel at a constant rate. So which of these graphs shows that the water is being filled at a constant rate, meaning it's the same rate the whole time. It's not increasing, it's not decreasing, it's not getting faster or slowing down, it's just the same rate every time. So which one would be for the green barrel? So the one that we would want to go with on this one, because it's being filled at a constant steady rate, would be B. So B is going to be our green barrel. All right, the next one, or the green hose, I'm sorry. Uh, the next one, the black hose is slowly opened when filling the barrel. So it's slowly filling and it just kind of continues and getting more and more. So which one would show that it's slowly opened when filling, but by the time we finally finish opening up the hose, it's fully open, so it's filling quite quickly. Okay, so the black hose is slowly opened. So that means when you go to twist the valve, you slowly open it. Now, over time, you're gonna be opening it up more and more, so it's gonna fill faster and faster but it starts out slow. So it's gonna start slow and then get faster over time. So that means we're gonna go with the black hose with A. All right, so process of elimination would mean that the last one is blue. Now the blue hose is completely open at the beginning, so it's gonna create a rush of water right away, and then it is slowly closed. So that means it's gonna slow down, okay? so quick increase and then it's just going to slow down over time. Okay, whereas this one is slowly opened and then it's fully open, this one is going to slow down or kind of curve off. All right, so that is how we're going to go through and do example two for section 3.1. All right, now before we move on to the back, there is a note here at the bottom that I do want to talk about before we move forward. All right, so the note here that some graphs, and let me see if I can straighten real quick. Some graphs that represent real world situations are drawn without any 
interruptions. In other words, they are continuous graphs. A continuous graph is a graph that is made up of connected lines or curves. All three of these are considered continuous graphs. The reason they would be continuous, because we're talking about gallons of water. Well, we aren't jumping from gallons of water as it's being filled up. Okay, think about filling a glass of water. It does, doesn't just jump from, you know, gallon to gallon to gallon. Now, I know that seems like a lot, so let's, for a cup of water. So let's think about a pool. When I fill up a pool of water, it's not jumping from one gallon, two gallons, three gallons, but in that one to two gallons amount of water that's being filled up, okay, I have 1.1 gallons, 1.2, 1.3. All of those numbers are technically being included. It's just happening at a rate that's fast. So continuous means that it's always, it's counting all those values and that it's connected. Now, other types of graphs are not continuous. They are made up of distinct unconnected points, which we'll see an example of in example three. These graphs are called discrete graphs. So an example of a situation that would relate to a discrete graph um, would be, let's see, let's say um, you're returning cans um, at Meijer or Walmart to get the refund. Okay, so when you return cans at Meijer or Walmart to get your refund or Kroger, it's 10 cent per can. So when I deposit one can, it's 10 cents, two, it's 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, I'm jumping from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40. Okay, it's not like I'm including all those little values in between. And another way that we can think of this, continuous, can you have partial of something? Can I have partial time? Yes, I can have a half hour, I can have quarter of an hour, whatever. Gallons, can I have partial of gallons? I can have a half gallon, a quarter of a gallon, whatever it may be. Discrete, you cannot have partial of one of the variables. So when we talked about cans, can I have partial of a amount of money? Okay, I can have half a dollar, I can have, you know, 30 cents, 40 cents, 19 cents, whatever. I can have partial money, but cans, can I have half a can? Can I deposit half a can? No. So in that situation, it would be discrete. So any time that you have a variable that you cannot have part of, that's when it would be a discrete situation. All right, so... For the remainder of our notes today is example three. They're going to ask us to sketch a graph of the situation, tell whether it is continuous or discrete, and then determine the domain or range for the problem. All right, example 3a already gives us the graph, but let's go through and read our situation. So example three, we have a student is taking a test there are 10 problems on the test. For each problem the student answers correctly, the student received 10 points. So there's a number of problems correct on the bottom part of our graph for our x-axis. So as we go further to the right, it's more questions the student got correct. For our y-axis, that's going to be for how many points. So the further up our graph goes is how many points the student received on the test. So if we look here, when zero answers were answered correctly, they got zero points. One question correct is 10 points, two is 20, three is 30, and so on till answering all 10 questions correct would be 100. Now, this graph is a discrete graph. And let's talk about why it is discrete. First of all, just by looking at our graph, because it's not a connected line, it's just a bunch of points, that makes it a discrete graph. The other part that makes this discrete, okay, if we look at points, can I have partial amount of points? Okay, could I have 57 points? In technicality, yes. Can I have partial number of questions correct? Okay, could I have half a question correct? And you're saying they're going, well, yeah, probably. Okay, think about in terms of for each problem correct, 
Okay, think of it as multiple choice. You can't have part of multiple choice question correct or not. Okay, so in this case, this is discrete because I can't have partial number of problems correct or incorrect. So that is what makes it discrete. Now, when we talk about domain and range, okay, something I'm going to make a note of here. This is something that is very helpful to know. Either write it on a piece of paper or sticky note or whatever, but domain is going to be the x values and range is going to be the y values. So domain is x, range is y. So do keep that in mind. Now I need to go through and find the domain and range for each problem. So our domain, what are the possible x values that I could have? Well, if we look at this problem, for this problem, okay, the number of problems that I can have correct, I can have 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 10. Okay, The key though here is I can't have any numbers that are decimals or fractions. So that means I'm just going to have a list of 1 through 10 for my domain. So my domain in this case is, um, and I did forget zero here. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, because those are the number of problems I could get correct. Now the range is the possible y values that you could have, because our graph doesn't show it being a connected line. Okay, that means we're not including every point. That means we're going to jump. So it's zero, ten, twenty, thirty, forty and so forth, all the way to 100. So we're going to write it each of those points. So 0, 10, 20, 30. We're going to go by tens all the way up to 100. And that is our domain and range for this problem. So again, domain is the possible x values range is the possible y values. Okay, so if it helps you remember, range is y, domain is x. Oh, I meant to put domain, not an x. Domain. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and practice a few more as these will be helpful to kind of reference and to see them done for your homework. I would definitely suggest you come back to them then when you are doing the homework. All right, let's take a look at B. Let's move this on up. So for B, we have a bathtub is being filled with water. After 10 minutes, there are 75 quarts of water in the tub. And then someone accidentally plugs, pulls the drain plug while the water is still running. The tub begins to empty. The tub loses 15 quarts in five minutes. Then someone plugs the drain again. The tub fills up for six more minutes, gaining another 45 quarts of water. After a 15 minute bath, the person gets out and pulls the drain plug, and it takes 11 minutes for the tub to drain. So, the situation for this. Okay, tub is being filled up with water, and after 10 minutes, it is at 75 quarts of water. So starting at zero, it takes 10 minutes and it fills up. I'm actually gonna draw a line because think about it, if I'm filling up a bathtub, okay, it's not like I just go after 10 minutes, I suddenly just dump 75 quarts of water, yet over time I'm continually filling up. The other thing, I can have partial time and I can have partial amount of water in quarts. Okay, I can have half a quart, I can have a full quart, I can have a quarter of a quart. Okay, you can have partial water. It doesn't just go from one quart, two quarts, three quarts, unlike we talked about with the test scores. So that is going to make this continuous. Because I can have partial time 
and partial amount of water. All right, then someone accidentally pulls the drain plug while the water is still running and the tub begins to empty. It loses 15 quarts in five minutes. So we're gonna go over five minutes and we're gonna go down 15 quarts. Someone plugs the drain for six more minutes. So we're gonna go to six more minutes and it gains another 45 quarts. So we're gonna be about here. After a 15 minute bath, the person gets out and pulls the drain. So we're gonna go 15, so it's five, 10, 15. So water level doesn't increase or decrease, it just stays the same, so we're gonna move it straight across. And then they pull out the drain plug and it takes 11 minutes for it to empty. So five, 10, so we're gonna end up about here till it's empty. So we're just gonna draw a straight line down. I know it's not perfectly straight, but it will work for this. So that is what our graph is gonna look like for this situation. Now I need to go through and provide domain and range for this. Now domain and range is gonna look a little different for continuous. Okay, when we talked discrete, okay, it was each individual possible points. Now, you could technically do that for continuous, but it would take forever. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at your ending value and your starting value. So our ending value here is zero, or our starting value is zero. Our ending value is 47 minutes. Okay, our starting value for here is zero, and our ending value here, or our top amount, 105. So domain is the x value, so the amount of time. Okay, the amount of time that occurred was 0 to 47 minutes. So to write that, we're going to do a compound inequality. So 0, it's less than or equal to, I'm going to use t for time, t and less than or equal to, and it was a total of 47 minute process. If you're wondering how I got 47, Okay, I just do 10 plus 5 plus 6 plus 15 plus 11, and that gives you 47. Now, for range, it's going to be the minimum amount of water and the maximum amount of water that was ever used. So we start out at 0 quarts of water, and we end up with 105 quarts of water. I get that from doing 75 minus 15 plus 45, and that's where we get 105. So it's gonna start at zero, so less than or equal to Q for quartz, less than or equal to 105. So whenever you have a continuous graph, okay, you're gonna write your domain and range as a set of values with a compound inequality so you use your starting point and your ending point for x as your start and your end. For the range, it's going to be your minimum and your maximum for your possible values here. So 0 to 105, 0 to 47. All right, so with that said, um, I'm not going to run through detail by detail for the remaining two parts of example three, yet I am just going to go through and um, put up my completed notes and talk about why the graph looks the way it does and why I did something for each part. So if we take a look at part C. So for part C, we have a local salesman is going door to door trying to sell vacuums. For every vacuum he sells, he makes $20. He can sell a vacuum, sell a maximum of 10 vacuums a day. So, is this discrete or continuous? Okay, I have it written as discrete, and let's talk about why. Can I have partial amount or partial number of profits? Can I have, you know, do I have to only have what's on here? Okay, can I have $40.50? 
Yes, okay, so you can technically have partial amount of money, but I cannot have partial number of vacuums, okay? I can't sell half a vacuum, okay? Whoever I work for is not going to be happy that I sold half a vacuum. They want me to sell a full vacuum. So because you can only sell a full vacuum, okay, one, two, three, four, whatever, and you can't sell a partial, that's what makes it discrete. So for every vacuum, it's $20. So we go starting at zero, zero. One is 20, two is 40, 60, 80, and so on until I reach my 10 vacuums a day mark, which would make me a profit of 200. So domain is the X values, the number of vacuums I can sell. That's zero to 10. We're not gonna go through and write it as zero is less than or equal to X, less than or equal to 10, because that would imply that I can include all the values. So 0 0.5, and I cannot have half a vacuum, so we list them all out. Now, because this is discrete, okay, even though I could have partial profit, okay, I need to go through and list each of the different situations. So it would be 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and so on, up to 200. All right, and then for D, for part D here, it talks about at the start of a snowstorm, it snows two inches an hour for two hours. So one hour, it's two inches, two hours it's four, it slows to one inch an hour for an additional hour, so we're up to five, it stops snowing for three hours and then it begins to melt at one half an inch an hour for the next two hours. Now the reason why this is continuous, okay, I can have partial amount of time and I can have partial amount of snow in inches. Okay, I don't have to just have one inch, two inch, three inch, four inches. Okay, I can have half an inch of snow or two and a half inches. So I went through and drew my graph based off what they told me. Now, the reason why it's zero is less than or equal to T, less than or equal to seven, that relates to how many hours. Well, we have two hours, one hour, three hours, and then two hours. So that's where the seven comes from. And then range is going to be for amount of snow. Well, it's two inches for two hours, so we're up to four. Another additional inch, so we're up to five. Again, because it is continuous, we need to write it as a compound inequality. Discrete, you write it as a list of values. Continuous, you're going to write an inequality. Discrete, you're going to write it as a list of numbers. All right, so with that said, that is your lesson for section 3.1 in your introduction into relationships. We're gonna build off of the idea of relationships and get looking at functions here soon. But that is how we go through and graph a situation based off of a description, where we go through and provide a description of a situation based off a graph. So that is it for your notes today. I definitely recommend that you have your completed notes up while you are looking at the homework or working through the homework. And be sure to ask me if you have any questions later. But that is it for today. And if you have any questions, just let me know next time you see me or shoot me an email. That is your lesson for section 3.1. Thank you for listening. And I hope you have a great day. All right, bye.